You're watching the Sporting Time Show with host Doug Thompson. Sponsored by Jewelry Barn and Pawn Shop. Good evening and welcome to the Sporting Time Show. I am Doug Thompson. Thank you very much for spending a few minutes of your Saturday evening with me. And of course, I'm very excited about this show tonight. We have we've got a great show. We're going to be talking baseball all the way throughout. And my first guest is a hugely successful baseball coach in Kentucky. He is a head coach of the Bowling Green Purples currently. Currently, Nate Neisenberg. <laughs> currently, yes, you are. Um, but congratulations, Coach, on, on a great start. And I kind of want to go back a little bit. Uh, you were at Henderson County for 11 seasons. Yes. You had a 280, 139, and one record <laughs> and four region championships in 11 seasons. And then you transitioned over to Bowling Green High School, uh, one uh, region championship. You lost in the finals by one. 2020 was a wash. And now you guys are 12 and three, having another super season. Uh, does it feel like you've been in it for what, 14 and a half seasons now? Yeah, some days it does. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I started off as an assistant at Bowling Green High School. Uh, I've coached college for four years as well. And so, you know, it's kind of a lifestyle. It's who you are. Yeah. And, um, you know, to have success, it, it, takes, it takes a village. I mean, it takes great assistant coaches, great parents, great players, you know, a supportive, uh, very supportive administrative staff. And so, um, you know, I've been very fortunate to be around successful people. Well, you know, one of the things I like to do, and I have you for two segments today, is, is to kind of go back in time a little bit and find out <laughs> why, why baseball? What, you know, was it Little League for you? Did you play high school? Did you play college? What was it about baseball that attracted you to that sport? Well, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed sports. And uh, I was probably had my most success playing baseball as when I was younger. And so just was always drawn to it. You know, I'm, you could come home every day from school. You could see the Cubs. You could watch the Braves every <laughs> night on TV. Yeah. They may not be winning, but, you, you know, right. you, you made a connection at the age of four, five, six. Uh, my family's always been big into baseball and softball. Um, and so, uh, you know, lived across the road from a ballpark. So it seems like I grew up on a ball field and, um, it's just, uh, something that I love. And, and, you know, as, as time went on, you know, through little league high school and, and playing at Western, uh, you know, uh, when you start thinking about careers and, and things that, you know, you enjoy yeah. or want to do, uh, you know, being a teacher and, and, and coaching was definitely at the top of the list. You know, and we're going to get into in the next segment a little bit about your, your coaching philosophy because obviously it works. Whatever you're doing, and you may not want to tell everybody what it is, but it works at, at Henderson County, hugely successful, as I said in the opening. Uh, and, and since you've left, you know, they've had kind of a, uh, ordinary seasons, right? Um, but uh, when, when you look at uh, at baseball, were, were there people in your life that uh, were mentors to you that, that got you, you know, involved in, in, in coaching and then obviously teaching? Well, there, there's so many, you know, I think probably the ones that had the, the largest impact would be Coach Joel Murray, you know, at Western Kentucky yep. and, of course, Dan Moser, who's helping. He was assistant yep. coach. And then one of my pitching coaches, Clyde Keller. Um, I had, uh, you know, I've played for so many people, whether it was Little <laughs> League High School, uh, American Legion Baseball, uh, you know, the list is long. I mean, it, it seems like I had so many positive impacts. And you're always, as a coach, you, you know, if, if, if you want to have success, you're trying to learn from many different guys. Pick, you know, look and, and pick and see what you can, uh, uh, what makes them successful right. or their program successful, I should say. And uh, a lot of coaches have a style, you know, and, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't back up. Greg Shelton. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was head coach at Franklin Simpson, I guess the most successful head coach in the fourth region. And uh, he's still coaching at, at yes. Todd Central. And so he, yes. he can't hang it up. He loves he it. He cannot. And, uh, you know, I, I was just very fortunate to do my student teaching there. And, of wow. course, Johnny Vance, yeah. uh, who, who was a longtime assistant. And uh, a lot of us, our paths have crossed American Legion baseball, high school baseball, college, whatever it is. And so... Um, you know, you just you pick and you take from a yeah. little bit from everybody. 
Yeah, well, when we come back from a break, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about maybe how your style has changed from when you started as the head coach to where you are today and, and talk a little bit about uh, the players that you have on this current team. Very, very good team. We're going to take a short break. More with Coach Eisenberg when we come back right here on the Sporting Time Show, WNKY, NBC 40. Welcome back. Coach Eisenberg, the head baseball coach over at Bowling Green High School, is my first guest. Then on deck, Patrick Forbes. Uh, looking forward to talking to him as well. But, Coach, um, we talked a little bit off camera about the longevity of coaches in this fourth region. You look at Sam Royce, I don't know, four decades maybe? Probably. Probably uh, so. Ethan McGuire, 20-plus years. Um, uh, Jason Jaggers over at Greenwood. Uh, you look at West Sanford that's probably, you know, 12, 13 seasons into it. Uh, what is it, do you think, uh, what is it that there really isn't that much turnover in, in this region? Right. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the things in the fourth region you look, and, and there have always been some great coaches and, uh, and, and longevity, and uh, a lot of us were connected going way back through American Legion Baseball. Um, and uh, I, I think, as I said, our paths have crossed, and, and I think there's good baseball in the fourth region. I yeah. think that's a lot of the 14th district's always been very strong. I mean, you could look back, back when it was five teams, and Franklin Simpson, you know, was in the yeah. district, and uh, and so, um, you know, you hear, you hear the stories of the battles from the you know the 70s and the 80s, and, right. <laughs> and I and I was there for the early 90s, so. Um, it is, uh, it's just been good baseball. And I, and I think one of the things, uh, so many of our, our coaches uh, played at Western Kentucky yeah. um, or played college baseball. And that doesn't necessarily mean or make you uh, a great coach by any means, right. but they, they definitely have the background, background information um, and, and know, you know how to implement what a good looking program, yeah. a good team looks like. I got to ask you about this team, the success of the program that you've had now for three seasons. Uh, I know there's an incredible feeder program in Warren County. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, you, you know, just like a lot of different sports, you can go to different high schools and say, yeah, that's a soccer school, basketball, football, whatever, you know, baseball. You know, you guys, South Warren, uh, Warren East is having a great season this year so far. But when you – when you look at a team at the beginning of the season, I know you know who you have coming up, but but how do you how do you coach it? I mean, is it fundamentals right off the bat, or is it strategy or a, a combination? It, it's uh, I think strategy is usually the thing you put in last. I think the the big thing is fundamentals, and then with high school kids, it's it's what develops. You know, what develops them as a player is it is it strength? Is it repetitions? hitting, throwing, you know, technology has improved vastly. And, and sometimes I think we get, you know, paralysis by analysis with some of the, <laughs> the technology. Because uh, yeah. there's so many gadgets out there and, and you know, you, you have to tinker and try. Uh, as much as I've had success with some of my players using technology, I've also had, uh, you know, to stop, back up and punt and, and go. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we're not ready for this. And I think that's one of the things that I really like about high school baseball is the development aspect. And you're really going to see kids grow, grow as young men, grow as baseball players. And, and I mean, you get to dream and hope and, and hope that uh, they all become stars, you know, sign college scholarships, <laughs> go play professionally. But we know realistically that there, there's only a select few that get to do that. But yeah. um, it is, I, th I think, development and I think, you know, uh, uh, repetition over and over. And, and that's one of the things sometimes you have to watch yeah. from a development standpoint. Uh, we have to mix up the repetition. Sometimes we have to take a break. You know, I know my philosophy and, and how I've done things has really changed over the last several years. And I think you have to constantly, as a coach and coaching staff, you know, evaluate what, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? What, what's going to work 
you know, how can we fix this problem? Yeah. Coach, we got about uh, 40 seconds left real quick. Um, year round sports as far as baseball about, about, you know, and basketball, whatever sport. Do you like that? No, I, I, it's unfortunate. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of old school. I like to see kids playing more than one sport. Yeah. Uh, I think when you play one sport, especially at an early age, uh, we see a lot of injuries. We see burnout. Um, and, and, you know, with, with playing multiple sports, I think not, not just the physical cross training, but the mental cross training yeah, is very it, important. Yeah, it's, it's amazing uh, how much kids play a sport this year. But, Coach, right. will you come back and join us again Absolutely. later on in the season? Absolutely. All right, well, congratulations so far on a great season. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Patrick Forbes, the Louisville commit, will be right here on the Sporting Time Show on WNKY NBC 40. Welcome back to the show. Well, I want to introduce my next guest. He is a 2022 Mr. Kentucky Baseball candidate. He just signed a few weeks ago uh, to play baseball at the University of Louisville, but he also has some major leaguers come and knock on at his door. I want to introduce Patrick Forbes from Bowling Green High School. Patrick, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So I pull. I've got pages of information on you. I mean, you know, you 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 put in your name, and you know, you get all sorts of stuff. And I want to start off, and I want to backtrack with the Little League World Series because you were on that team in 2016, and uh, I had your I had your picture. You look so young. I mean, you look so young. You you were young. What was that experience like for you? And how much does it? Do you think it impacted you today? I mean, that was the best experience of my life. I mean, they treat you like a celebrity. Everyone's asking you for autographs. You play on ESPN. I mean, millions of people are watching you. I mean, that, that helps me today because you learn to play in front of pressure. Yeah. There's 20,000 people at one game, so you just learn to deal with all that and all the attention towards you. So, you know, Rick Kelly at the time was your, your, your head coach, and he had been there before. Did you have any expectations uh, when you went there as a player as to what was going to happen to you as far as, you know, the celebrity and, and all that? I mean, you kind of, because you were friends with the people on the team before, so they tell you how it is. And, I mean, it was just a great experience. You meet people from all over the world. You meet people from Australia, yeah. wherever. But, I mean... It was just a really great experience, and I'm really glad it happened to me. So you, you, you play year-round, correct? I mean, you play yeah. on, on travel teams. Uh, is it considered AAU, or is it a different? I just call it summer ball. Summer ball. Yeah. And um, do you play on Kentucky, or do you play on a Tennessee team? Or? I played on a Kentucky team the past three summers, and then this fall I played with a team out of Tennessee, and we yeah. went to Florida and Arizona, a lot of big tournaments. Obviously fun for you to, to get out there. Yeah. So here you are, your senior season. Uh, you, are, you had a great junior season as well. You're, you're pitching, I believe, in the 90s. You're, bat, you're batting 550, 585, something ridiculous. You had a grand slam the other day. How was that? Was that cool? Yeah, that was really cool. I mean, to step up in a big game like that against... I played with some of those guys on the other team. So to beat your buddies, that was pretty fun. <laughs> so you've seen, you know, major league games where a major leaguer hits a, a grand slam. And they have different styles. You know, they flip the bat, they drop the bat, they look, watch it. What was you, I mean, what did you do? Well, I don't think anyone in the dugout saw the ball. It went so high. I didn't even know it was a home run <laughs> until the ump said it was a home run. No really? One, no one was running. I was like, where's the ball? So the left you, fielder didn't know where it was either. So, but that had, I mean, it had to be a blast to, to circle the bases and come back and hit home plate and the guys congratulate you, but, but a grand slam. How many grand slams have you had? I can't remember the last time I had a grand slam. Yeah. That's amazing. So, uh, you had a great experience, a little leaguer, having a great high school career. Uh, what did you like about Louisville? 
Uh, that's where I've always wanted to play. You know, I knew Luke Brown. Yep. He played at Bowling Green. He went there. So he helped me get in contact. Coach Eisenberg helped me get in contact with them. And I mean, I love Coach McDonald. He's a really great coach. He cares about you as a person even more than a player. And uh, they do a lot of winning, and I like winning. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, I would imagine that you have several other opportunities, different schools, and, and plus Louisville's kind of close to home. I mean, it's, it's uh, not that far away. They've got a great schedule, uh, so you get to travel. Uh, were there other schools that you had considered that, that were maybe up there with Louisville? And, and I mean, once Louisville offered me, that was a done deal. Was they it. offered me, I think it was on a Wednesday, and I committed the Thursday. Is that so, right? Yeah. So you've always been a Cardinal fan, not, not a U.K. fan. I mean, not, you don't not I, really. Not, I mean, my sister goes to UK, but Louisville's always where I wanted to play baseball at. So you've got you've got the the red stuff in the house, and and you've got some of the blue yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, when we come back, I want to talk to you about this season, about what it's like to navigate as a senior with the kind of attention that you're getting, and uh, also the Mr. Baseball uh, possibility of the candidate. So we're going to talk more about that. More with Patrick Forbes on the Sporting Time Show right here on WNKY NBC. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Patrick Forbes is my guest. He is the senior from Bowling Green High School Baseball, having an amazing season again this year, not only signed with the University of Louisville, but also being pursued uh, by the major leaguers. What is that like? I mean, that has got to be surreal in some cases. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, that's what I've, that's what I've worked for to get all that attention. And uh, I, I try not to think about it when they're there, but... I mean, it obviously comes up, but I just try to control what I can control and just that stuff will take care of itself. You know, Mark Biggs went through this. We went through it with him, and Hunter Green went through this as well. It certainly brings a lot of attention to your program too, right? I mean, they get to see other players that are on your team as well. But can they contact you, or do they have to go through coach, or do you know – who's showing up like what club is showing up or yeah they can text me they usually text coach Eisenberg uh I usually don't know when they show up coach is usually just like reds are coming today braves are coming today whatever but that's awesome yeah it's really cool so do you have a favorite team as a fan growing up that you really really like I've always liked the Yankees oh nice that's where my dad grew up nice the so. east American League East listen do me a favor. If you go, go to the Tigers. That's my team. They lose so many. They lose so bad. But just go to the Tigers. Okay, so you're having a great seat. You hit the Grand Slam. You're hitting 558. You got a great team around you. Kind of talk about the guys that are with you on this team this year. Yeah, a lot of guys have stepped up. I mean, after our first couple of scrimmages, I think a lot of people had their doubts about us. But, I mean, we've won a lot of games. Yeah. We have three losses, but those are all against top five teams in the state. So a lot of guys have stepped up. Dawson and Dunn have been pitching really good. We've got a lot of guys hitting throughout the lineup. Yeah, and that's, that's really important. And, and to have three guys with, with a two or under ERA, as you know, uh, is so important when you get into the postseason because you've you got to have arms because um, of, of the pitching rules, right? Yeah. So how do you, how do you uh, physically, do you have a regiment that you go through as far as uh, stretching, as far as eating, as far as... Because I've seen your 6'3", 195. I've seen 6'4", 195. Not sure. Uh, but how do, you, how do you go about taking care of yourself? I try to eat as much as I can. I've got to maintain that weight. I've always been a skinny kid. But, I mean, just playing baseball every day, you stay loose. Yeah. You stay athletic. You try not to stay in the gym because uh, I was working out a lot last year, but then I got hurt. So I try really? to do that a lot. Yeah. So, so have you ever have you ever wanted to play? I mean, what what attracted you to baseball? I mean, before the Little League World World Series that you went to, I mean, 
You could have played football. You could have been a tight end. You know, whatever. What What was baseball that that really uh, got you? I think I was the best at it. I, I might have played basketball. That's what my dad played. But I just played in the rec league around town, so yeah. that was fun. But I mean, it's it's an individual sport. It yeah. helps you with your like mentality. I just loved it. Yeah, and, and you know, baseball it, it is an incredible sport, and and I really like the high school scene, the high school baseball. It just seems to be a, a faster pace. It seems there seems to be more action than some of the major league stuff. But again, that's that's for another show. Um, so, Mr. Base, Mr. Kentucky Baseball, what an honor! Turner Butchery got basketball. Wouldn't it be amazing? Uh, and I know you probably don't think about this and you don't think about a lot of things that I'm throwing at you right now because you're focused on the season. But just kind of talk about that honor a little bit. That'd be really cool. I mean, me and Turner are buddies. It'd be cool to him win Mr. Basketball and me win Mr. Baseball. I mean, I've worked hard for it. Yep. Me and my buddies talk about it occasionally if I'll win it or not, but I can't control that. I just got to control how hard I play. And You... You've been a part of this fourth region of 14th district. You know the guys that play in other teams. Talk a little bit about the competitiveness of the 14th district. We've got about uh, 45 seconds. Uh, I'm excited for the competition we're going to see. There's a lot of good teams, a lot of good pitchers. I think Warren East and Russell County are pretty strong, yep. uh, but we'll play them. I'm sure it'll be a good game. Yeah, it's, it's going to be amazing. Listen, congratulations on all your successes. Will you come back um, towards the end of the season yeah, after sure. all the smoke clears? And I think good things are going to happen with you. This 585, I'm going to circle that right now and see where that goes. But thank you very much, Patrick. Congratulations on everything. Thank you for joining. I want to thank Coach Eisenberg for coming in today. And just remember, you can also visit stfanclub.com forward slash live to watch the Purples and other teams as well. Uh, we on-demand everything, so if you can't make it, you can go back and watch it. But anyway, thank you very much. For Doug Thompson, Coach Eisenberg, and Patrick Forbes, have a fantastic week. Good night. <laughs>